For the very latest on the renewed fighting happening between Israel and Hamas right now, let's bring in Israeli government spokesperson Tal Heinrich. Tal, thank you for joining us on your Saturday. We appreciate your time. Good to see you. My pleasure. Um, I want to get to this uh, ceasefire that has now ended and the fighting continues as our reporter Greg Palcott just told us. Um, where are we on this Saturday uh, now that the ceasefire has collapsed? Have you recalled, have your negotiators left Qatar? Well, the prime minister has ordered the head of the Mossad and his uh, negotiating team to leave Qatar because there's no point. The talks have reached an impasse. Hamas, as you know, released hostages for seven consecutive days as per the outline that was agreed upon. And then come day eight, they failed to deliver us the list for more hostages to be released. And so they not only that they did that, they also opened fire. So the humanitarian pause is over. We said, Aisha, very clearly that the moment that Hamas will stop releasing more hostages, that is the moment when we stop the pause and we'll resume the fight. Because Hamas only responds to pressure. It's not only us saying it. President Biden also uh, correctly stated it just a few days ago. Hamas understands pressure, military pressure, and we will continue. If it wasn't for military pressure combined with diplomatic pressure, we wouldn't have seen the release of any hostages until today. And we are very determined to complete the goals of the SWAR, which is to bring all hostages home and also to eliminate this terrorist regime that controls Gaza. So let me ask you this. Would you send your negotiators back to Qatar um, if things were to change? What would have to change? Because I guess, what do you tell all the families in Israel right now? There's still 130 plus hostages in the hands of Hamas right now. We're going to talk to a family in just a couple of minutes here who still has a family member over there. What do you say to those families uh, that are wondering, now what? Well, these families have been going through a torture of mind and soul, as well as uh, our entire nation, honestly. And we want to bring their loved ones back home. We will continue to invest the utmost efforts. Uh, I cannot expand on the nature of such efforts um, because human lives hang in the balance. So uh, I, I will not divulge any information related to this, but I can tell you that we will do everything humanly possible to bring their loved ones back home. And as you know, the hostages who returned home, we also want to be able to tell them that they are completely safe. Right now, we still can't do that because mm -hmm. Hamas are still in control in Gaza and we still have this terrible Earth threat above our heads. More than 12, I think, yeah, more than 1,200 missiles were fired at Israeli territory uh, over the past right. of, of eight weeks. It's an impossible reality. Tal, really quickly, I want to get to a couple other things about uh, the military um, uh, efforts in southern Gaza. But first, on this New York Times report, I'm sure you read, uh, just came out that uh, details that Hamas had been planning this for well over a year in great detail. Does that match? with what the Israeli government has discovered about Hamas's uh, plans and preparations for the attack? You see, Aisha, there's no doubt here that the October 7th massacre was a, a very big failure on our end, and we are a democratic country that uh, has conducted inquiries in the past, and we are conducting inquiries right now. As we speak, as we go, we are drawing lessons, but right now uh, we are focused on one thing alone. Uh, and that is eliminating the Hamas regime in Gaza and bringing back the hostages. When the time will come, we will give more answers. And, and of course, our public will hear and, and, and we, we will tell, we will answer all these important questions. Um, but right now, this is our focus. Okay, so the White House, um, as you know, does not support Israel um, going into southern Gaza unless there are detailed plans about protecting civilians. You heard John Kirby a little while ago in Lucas's report. And and this was VP Harris just moments ago in Dubai talking about this. Listen to this, Tal. We support Israel's legitimate military objectives to eliminate the threat of Hamas. As Israel defends itself, it matters how. The United States is unequivocal. International humanitarian law must be respected. Too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. So I guess my question is, you know, Obviously, it's a big concern for the White House because this southern Gaza is where all the civilians were told to go to to seek shelter. Where do they go now? And do you agree with the White House? 
first, Aisha, it's, it's a big concern to us as well. We don't want to see any civilians caught in the crossfire between us and between Hamas. And all of the casualties on, on both the Israeli and the Palestinian side that you've seen over the past eight weeks, um, all these people would have still be, been alive today if it wasn't for Hamas's actions. Uh, Hamas is committing a double war crime here. They're targeting our population from inside and underneath the civilian population of Gaza because they know that Israel does not want to kill any uh, innocent uh, Palestinian. So uh, we have presented Secretary Blinken, who was just in Israel, I think it was his third visit since the beginning of, of the war uh, that Hamas has dragged us into, and we have, have presented him with uh, the plan that we have for the uh, upcoming stages of this war. We are determined to eliminate the Hamas regime. There's no daylight between where, Washington where would, and, and Jerusalem Tal, where on that. Where would you tell civilians to go now, though, the ones that are in southern Gaza? Have you seen the very detailed uh, humanitarian evacuation zone map that the IDF spokesperson has presented? It is very detailed. It's dividing the Gaza Strip into uh, uh, different uh, locations that are numbered, uh, different zones. So we have designated safe zones. We're continuing to uh, safeguard humanitarian corridors and as we'll operate. And in fact, we will tell the civilian population of Gaza exactly to which area they need to move uh, in order to be safe. We want to safeguard the population of Gaza. Now, I, I'm sure that some of your viewers are watching us right now, uh, maybe families and, and, and friends of U.S. Armed Forces service members, and, and asking themselves, well, what kind of military operates this way, announces in advance when and where it's going to operate? Well, the answer is the most moral military in the world, and the IDF. And you'll tell them through what source? Well, uh, we have different uh, channels in which we've done that before. Leaf, if it's uh, regular media, uh, social okay. media, leaflets, phone calls, it is it is very, uh, they should heed our advice, even okay. if Hamas tells them to stay put, by the way. Got it. All right, Tal Heinrich, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.